The original purpose of scripting was to automate the printing of reports. It was just a dialog, and you had check boxes and pop-up menus to choose what find, finds you wanted to do, what sort, what layout you wanted to go to, what the print setup was, all those things just to do reporting. It's expanded since then, of course, but that's the original purpose, and that's what we're going to do with it right now. We're going to show you how to print a record from the contacts using that layout we designed previously. You don't want people to have to come in here and pop up the menu, not to mention they can't even get to this option, and even if they could, it wouldn't show anything. You don't want to have to have them navigate over here to our contacts form print and then you know figure out how to do all the printing stuff you want to walk them through it because there are a few things that that you know are not clear and obvious for new users you should make it as easy as possible so we're going to automate that whole process for them and make it really an easy thing because they can click on a print button and answer some questions that's very easy for them to do so we're going to go into the script workspace type in contacts print and the first thing I'm going to do, and I almost always do this when I'm doing prints, is I'm going to make a new window. I like to have that new window show up on the screen above the one that's behind it. That way that they know that when they close that window, they're back where they started from. I mean, you could just go to layout and then have a back button, but then you have to define the back button. I just find this this makes it easier when you have one window on top of another. It, it's an easy thing for people to understand. They realize, oh, I just opened up a new window to print. And when I close it, I'll be back to where I was. It's just simple for them to understand, so that's why I do this. So we'll come in here. We have four choices here, document, floating document, dialog, and card. We're going to stick with the simple document. That's like going to the window menu and choosing new window. It simply opens a new window that you can control completely like the previous window. The other ones have a lack of control involved with them, and we'll go over those later. So the document here we can name it. We want to go and name that window. So we'll go in and probably we could say print contact like that. And of course that's going to be a calculation. As soon as we exit we'll put quote marks around it. But I think we could get a little bit better than that. I'm going to say print, put a quote there and concatenate the name full in there. Then it will be clear what we're printing on there. And I always like to offset the window because when you do a new window manually by going up here and choosing new window, it offsets it automatically. But when you do a new window from a script, it's actually going to put it right on top of the existing window. And that can be a little confusing. I like to have a little offset here. So get window top, and that's going to get the exact position of the top portion of the window. And I'm going to add 30 to it. So it's going to position at 30 points or 30 pixels from the original position from the top. And then we'll do the same thing here with the get window left function and add 30 as well. Now it's offset. I'm not going to change anything else. It's a real simple. I don't want to have any limitations on the window. I just want a new window because I like that whole interface. As soon as I do that, I'm going to go to layout and we'll choose my contacts form print. Now if you're seeing this animation, this has only to do with the iOS platform. For instance, if we come over here and look at compatibility and choose Macintosh, this is not compatible there. It's only compatible on iOS right here. Now it doesn't dim it out or anything like that, but trust me, it only works on the iOS platform. So don't get fooled by that, it's not available right there. Next thing I'm going to do is enter preview mode. I want them to show what it looks like when they're looking, you know, like it's going to print. I want them to see that. And I also like to be framed, so I'm going to adjust the window. And I'm going to choose resize to fit. Now resize to fit in browse mode adjusts it to the borderline on the right side and the last part on the bottom. When you're in preview mode, it frames it to that print setup page. So I'm going to come back here and set my print setup here. Dialog off, but I'm going to remember by checking this option, I'm going to remember these settings in here. I don't have to change anything, but now I'll remember that every time I run the script, I want it to be inside this orientation that will be portrait here this type of paper and so on now it what will happen is sometimes is that you'll go ahead and manually print maybe using landscape and then if you don't have this print set up to, to reverse it back to where you want it then it's going to print in landscape and that's going to so you always put a print set up in there with the restore option which is what I just set there always do that so that it always changes it to exactly what you want 
Okay, so let's see how it works. I often like to look at my scripts before I'm completely done so I can take a look at how they're working because I might not have anticipated something. If I write the whole thing, I might have to take some code out. I like to check it every once in a while partway through so I make sure that it's working the way I thought it would at the beginning. Then when I'm adding the rest of the code, I'm pretty sure it's going to work with it. So we'll double click on this button, type in print, choose perform script, scroll to the bottom, contacts print, pretty easy to do browse mode, hit the print button, look at that. I can close that. It doesn't print yet, but I can close it. And let's try it with another contact. I'm going to hit print now. We're on Ida Osborne now. And realize that it actually goes to John Mark Osborne, or it appears to. If I go back to browse mode, notice it's actually on Ida Osborne. That's because preview mode is showing pages. It's on Ida Osborne's record, but in preview mode it shows the first page of the found set. So there's the difference. So what are we going to do? We want to preview what they're printing. We're printing a single contact, so we need to isolate that record. It's pretty easy to do. Right after we get to the layout, or somewhere before we preview, I'm going to run three steps. Show all records, omit record, and then show omitted only. So those three steps are a great way to isolate a record. And I'll tell you how it works in a second. Let's first, before we forget, put a comment on here. So we'll say, isolates the current record. And I think I'll duplicate this comment and put it on the end so I know where it begins and ends. So here's what it does. We're on Ida Osborne's record because we opened up a new window and stayed on a layout based on the same source table. So when we go from here, Ida Osborne's record, to a new layout, it's still on Ida Osborne's record at that point. So this changes nothing. So what happens is I show all records, but I'm still again on Ida Osborne. It doesn't change records when I show all records. It stays on the current record. It's just now I don't have a found set. So now I can omit the record. Ida's out of the found set. And then I can reverse the found set so then Ida's the only one in the found set. It's a pretty cool little technique. Works great. And let's see how it works. Go ahead and save this. We'll hit print. Notice that Ida Osborne is showing in preview. And if we go ahead back to mine, hit print. You notice I'm showing. And if we go back to browse mode, what you'll see is we have one of 91 found. That's how it isolated that record. So let's go in here and add one more step. After we adjust the window and show it, I'm going to go ahead and put the print dialog up here. I'm going to leave the dialog on because I want to give them a chance to cancel it. I'm going to specify the print options so I can remember them. And it really doesn't matter here. We could do current record or records being browsed. But since we isolated the record, it's only going to print the current one no matter what. There's some other options here, such as what page to start from. You know, we could uh, have a 10-page Word document where we want to add a FileMaker report at the end. So we want it to start at page 11 on the page numbering. You can remember all these options in here. I'm just going to cancel here for right now. Well, actually, I want to specify that I have to hit print here to, to remember it. Don't forget that. If you, if you don't hit print, then it's not going to keep that checked, and it's not going to put the restore option there. OK, and then after that, after it prints, I'm going to close the window. Let's see how that works. We'll save that. Print. It brings up this dialog. They can then print or hit cancel. You can't really see my printed out page here, so I'm going to hit cancel. And notice that it gives you this message. Print has been canceled. Do you want to continue with the script? That meaning the close window step. If I hit continue, yes, it closes the window, but that's kind of confusing for users. And there's a real easy way to get rid of that. All we have to do is come in and put in a step called set error capture. Now I'm going to put it at the very beginning. And you have an option of on or off. Now the default is for it to be off. And every new script that runs is off automatically. So you have to set this to on if you want it on on every script. But we'll get more into that when we cover the ultimate find. For right now, what this does is says, don't show me FileMaker error messages. Now, I don't really need it till down here until we actually get the error message. You could turn it on right here. Again, once the script is done running, it's going to go back to off. But I kind of get used to it up at the beginning of the script. So I'm going to move it up there. Just kind of that's where you look for it to see what the setting is. So that will stop that error message from appearing. So now if we hit print, 
and decide we don't want to print it and hit cancel, it just basically doesn't show that FileMaker error message. Now, in the ultimate find, we'll talk about how you can test for those errors, but for right now, all we did was we wanted it to just continue on with the script and not show that error message, and that works perfectly for us.